Hey, everybody. Hello, 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 everyone. Happy Tuesday. I know I was not on yesterday. I was not feeling it. And I like to keep this show positive and upbeat. And yesterday I just couldn't. And, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about that in the beginning before we get to our regular show, because we are having our regular show. But, um, you know, we, we have to, we can't ignore the outside world. We live in it. It affects us. And sometimes we need to take a break. Let me turn this music down before Facebook is talking about they're going to block my video. Mary, you're about to get me in trouble. Um, okay. Here we go. And... Yes, okay. <coughs> Um, okay. Hello. Hey, Joey. How you doing? How's it going? Um, okay. Let's get this going. All right. Yes. Viva la resistance. <laughs> get him with the French, Joey. <clears throat> all right um guys my sister is watching hi joey if you guys um are looking for a bomb makeup artist and you are in the new england area or you want to fly somebody out to come beat your face go check out at uh, glam studio j on instagram and facebook Oh, and also check out her new her uh, new page of the season spices. My sister is like a spice guru. She will never steer you wrong. Go follow of the season spices on Instagram. Okay. Um, now that that's out of the way, hi mom, hi dad, hi Joe. Um, we're getting started at eight oh five as per usual. Um, all right, hopefully, hey, Sincere39, how are you? Lots of stuff going on. How are you holding up, sir? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about why I wasn't on last night and what's happening. Y'all, my eyebrows are out of control, out of control. <laughs> um... Yes. Whew, we're here. We are here. How was your day, Sincere? Hello. I don't know who just came in. Say hi so I can greet you properly. Okay. What time is it? I need this tablet to fire up. Hold on. Let me put some chapstick on. Yes. <laughs> All right. What do you mean power off? Oh, great. Okay, hold on, guys. I got to get a charging cord for the recording device. Give me a second. You know it's a one-person production here. Don't judge me. We are all family, and we all suffer technical difficulties. Okay. Hello, Facebook friends. Sorry about that. I had to go get a charging cord for the tablet. So, uh, you know, the beginning of the show might be delayed. Hi, Nyrika. 
227K. What an interesting name. Um, hello to my friends on Facebook. All right, we are getting started very, very shortly. Um, yeah, I got to... Dang it. Okay, I know exactly what to do. One second, guys. One second. Okay. <laughs> oh, hey, Renee. You had to set up your notification. I'm glad that you did. Girl, I could not do this show last night. I was just in my feelings, and I said I could not give people a quality show. So I took the night off last night, but we are back. We are in full effect. I'm very, uh, I'm feeling energized. I've got some things I want to share with you. Hello, Dion Will, too. Uh, okay. All right, here we go. Oh, I should probably plug this in. No, don't fall. Okay. One second, my lovelies. We are having big technical difficulties on this evening. But it's okay. All right. What do you mean you're shutting down? Hi, open arms cleaning. Hello, hello, hello. How did you unplug already? All right. So guys, tell me how you're feeling while we're setting up. We know that there's a lot of stuff happening in the news. And, um, you know, we're not going to act like it's not happening. We are going to address it. But let me know how you're feeling. How have you guys been holding up? Um, have any of you gone out to the protests? Oh, I, well, I haven't had any live since Thursday, Renee. I'm on Monday through Thursday, but last night I wasn't on because your girl was not feeling it. There was just, there was no way I was going to be able to give you a quality show. And I always strive to give a quality show. Why won't you turn on? Uh, okay. Sorry, friends. You were very upset. Open arms cleaning. Hi, Zephyrina. That's totally, that's totally normal. Open arms cleaning. I think we've all felt a little upset over the last few days. Hey, Smith Legal Solutions. Um... Had to stop my adult kids from going out while they are angry. Wow. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's that's another thing that I'm... You you felt indifferent? Why indifferent, Zephyrina? Um, yeah, we have, you know... Everybody is going to react to, to these situations differently. I was kind of overwhelmed. That was one of the reasons why I didn't come on last night, because... I just didn't have the words. I felt so heavy and I try to keep the show as positive as possible. And I just did not have the means to do so. Um, so that, so that's why I wasn't on last night, but you know, people are angry. People are sad. Some people are indifferent. Um, I'm not going to lie. I had to delete some people off of my Facebook friends because it was just, you know, um, open arms cleaning said if they went out angry, they could easily be provoked. That's been me this past week. Yeah, it's, it's been tough. <clears throat> um, but you know, while these times do cause us stress and we are allowed to take time out, I took time out yesterday. We still have to use our platforms to speak out against injustice, you know, um, you know, people's lives were lost and no one was being held accountable. And this has been something that's been persistent in American history. And it's just reached a breaking point along with COVID 2020 has just been a cluster, you know, um, but 
these incidents like, you know, George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, they are not unique. And I think that's why things have gotten to the point that they are, is that we've, people feel like they've tried everything. They've tried being peaceful. They've tried marching. They've tried talking and nobody's listening and people, you know, you can only be pushed so far and I'm not condoning, uh, any activities, but I'm also not condemning it. You know, people react to stress in different ways. Um, and especially when you have a regime that is not listening to you, sometimes, you know, people are going to, they're going to act out and that's why you need to listen to people. Um, for my friends who, you know, may not understand why people are so angry or may feel that people aren't right to be out there in the streets, um, you know, you're entitled to your opinion, but I also encourage you to find, uh, to find resources, to research, uh, why people are so angry. This is not a unique instance. This is something that's been going on for so long and it needs to stop. Um, open arms cleaning said, this has showed me where people are. I said, my son's life matters. And some life said I was selfish to say that. Wow. That is incredible. Um, under no circumstances is property more valuable than human life. At least that is my opinion. So again, while I do not condone what the, uh, let me separate them because the protesters are not necessarily looters and vice versa. So while I don't necessarily, um, agree with what the looters and vandalizers are doing, I also do not condemn it. Okay. Um, Zephyrina said, I want justice. I feel we need to make a positive change, but don't know what that looks like. And the thing is, I don't think anybody necessarily knows what that looks like. Hello, Oryx translation. Um, hello, Nine Holloway. I don't think anybody necessarily knows what that looks like, but we have to start somewhere. We need to have, you know, uh, leaders who will listen to us, who understand what our needs are. We need to have people who are in positions of power who are willing to make the changes. And it's just, you know, um, and, you know, nobody wants to be in this powder keg. But, you know, I, uh, I liken it to battered woman syndrome. You have those women who've been abused for years and years and then they lash out and they murder their abuser, right? This has been over, you know, 400 years of abuse even after, you know, so-called freedom, there are still things that, that continue to happen to our community and nobody seems to care. And as much as we try and talk and march and be peaceful, it didn't seem like anyone was listening. So I can understand why people got frustrated. But while, you know, we have a right to feel our feelings, there are constructive ways to use our energy. And I wanted to provide you guys some options if you know, you didn't know where to start in terms of, um, you know, lending your help in any form or fashion to this movement that is happening. So, um, for those of you who might want to, uh, hello, Miss Sunley, for those of you who may want to donate, um, to help, uh, the family of Mr. Floyd, the gentleman who was killed by the police officer, um, you can donate to the family fund at gofundme.com forward slash F forward slash George Floyd. Um, oh girl, we're not even going to talk about that open arms cleaning. Okay. Because that is just from the pit of hell. Um, but yeah, if you would like to donate to help out George's family, George has a daughter he is leaving behind as well as family members. You can donate um, at GoFundMe.com forward slash F forward slash George Floyd. Um, now, you guys know that I am in the D.C. area. If you, um, yeah, if you are in the D.C. area and you would like to help out those who were arrested while protesting, there is a bail fund um, um, being uh, put together by the Freedom Fighters D.C. And if you would like to donate, oh, Linda. Oh, yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, Linda, we just talked the other day. Um, yeah. So if you would like to donate to the D.C. Uh, bail Bond and Emergency Aid Fund, you can donate to um, um, by, via Cash App to Dollar Sign Freedom Fighters DC or via Venmo at at sign 
freedom hyphen fighters dc now money isn't the only way that you can um help out you can repost you know good information that you know is solid out there you can uh you allow people to use your platforms to amplify to amplify their voices you can just listen you don't necessarily have to be out there in the streets marching you if you don't want to reach into your wallet that is perfectly fine okay thank you smith legal solutions but please don't let this moment pass by without at least reflecting on how we got here as a country okay thank you zephyrina um you know even even if you even if that is all you do then you know i will be happy if you are not florida i don't have any information about florida i am only giving um information that i know that i have vetted personally um if you guys have thank you zephyrina if you guys have funds that you would like to put in the comments this is the one time i'll let y'all do that you can put you know the um the the social media pages of the funds that people can donate to because i know we have people all around the country watching um so if there is a bail fund or some type of aid fund for the protesters look as much look i'm gonna tell y'all this right now my cousin is a police officer and i love him to death but we are not doing any police um funds okay so you know if you are pro-police that is th those are your politics but we are not going to be promoting any pro-police funds all right um these uh if you're going to be promoting any any help funds any aid funds these should be for uh, to help the protesters and for any organizations that are trying to dismantle oppression and racism in this country. All right. So you have the time to do that. Um, this is one of the longest intros that we've had, but I wanted to speak to you guys about that because it is very important that we know what's going on. Also, um, okay. So today was the last day to mail in, um, primary ballots for uh voting in some states including mine i hope you guys who if it was primaries in your states that you sent your ballots in some of you have your primaries coming up in the next few days make sure you vote make sure you vote oh muhammad thank you muhammad said god help you america with a broken heart emoji thank you muhammad um but yes um what was i saying uh, yes, make sure you vote in your primaries. It's not just the big elections that you need to worry about. You need to be voting in your local elections. Local elections affect you far more um, drastically. Um, while the presidency is important, local elections affect you a lot too, okay? So you need to be voting for your city council members, your judges, your uh, attorney, you know, attorney generals, whoever you can vote for, you should be voting in all of your elections, okay? Okay, because that is another way for you to make your voice heard. If uh, you know, if you don't want to protest out in the streets, you can protest at the polls with your vote. All right. Um, yeah. So we don't usually get you know too too crazy on here with stuff like that, but there was absolutely no way that I was going to be able to do this show. Hi, Hemp Connect. There was absolutely no way that I was going to be able to do this show without at least addressing what is going on. Last night, I just felt so heavy I couldn't do the show. Um, and I always want to bring you positivity, you know, and, you know, a semblance of cheer. And I just didn't feel like I could do that last night. And when I come to you guys, I want to come to you with joy and I want to come to you with excellence. And I was not there last night, but I'm here today and I thank you all for being here right now. Okay. So we are going to get started. All right. Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? If we're ready, let me see some thumbs up. And we're going to get our show started. We've got some interesting stories tonight. Netflix is out here just getting everybody all in a tizzy. Um, Apple's being sued. We uh, A state trademark beat out a federal trademark in a very interesting case. Thank you, Smith Legal Solutions, for putting all of those links in the, um, in the comments. I appreciate you. Um, Ric Flair uh has made a deal with the wwe um what else is happening here hold on a second Ooh. and um 
All right, so we've got one thumbs up. Okay, Smith Legal Solutions, the only one ready. That's cool, Smith Legal Solutions. We're going to have our own little party up here on Instagram, okay? <laughs> All right, let us get started, okay? All right. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Thursday live broadcast where I teach business and uh, pop culture lessons using, um, excuse me, business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. I'm all tongue tied, y'all. Thank you, Zephyrina. Um, if you are wondering who I am, I'm Natalie Pierre Lewis. I'm the host of the show, and I am the owner and operator of NPL Consulting LLC, a business formation firm. What that means is I help people like yourself set up your business paperwork. So if you need things that, um, if you need things like getting your business registered with the state, getting EIN numbers and DUNS numbers, getting your contracts together, making sure you have operating agreements, having your hiring policies in place, and basic brand protection strategies. I'm your girl. If you're wondering why I'm qualified, I'm a licensed attorney, having one for 14 years in accounting. I've started multiple businesses for myself and others, both online and offline. I've had many careers in the realms of entrepreneurship, the law, education, hospitality, and administrative support. And most important, I am very passionate about making business and legal education as accessible to everyone as possible. Not everybody has the time, the money, or the desire to go to business school or to law school, but so many of you have amazing business ideas. And if you're going to be successful in business, Business. There are just some concepts that you need to know. There's no way around it. All right. So that's why I'm here. Um, <clears throat> and we got Mohammed, my friend here, um, that we are a beautiful people, proud that we are Africa. Oh, thank you, sir. Um, thank you, Smith Legal Solutions. Uh, but yes, so that is uh, what I what I do. If you want to get in contact with me so you can get your business life together, make sure your paperwork is in order, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go to linktree forward slash NPL Consulting Firm. That is the only link in my bio on Instagram, and it is all over my page on Facebook. When you go to linktree forward slash NPL Consulting Firm, there you're going to be able to set up a free 15-minute consultation if you are a first-time client, okay? So a whole 15 minutes with me. Um, then you'll also be able to download my free biz launch cheat sheet that is this is a PDF document that is going to help you choose and start your dream business in seven days or less. Okay. But if you're past that point and you're like, I already know what I'm doing. I need to move on to the next step. We need to make some concrete moves. Um, you also have the biz launch, uh, excuse me, business startup basics video training. Uh, that you can pick up for $59. The Business Startup Basics video training is going to take you through the nuts and bolts of uh, setting up your business properly. You know, how do you do an EIN number? Where are you supposed to go? Uh, what do you need a DUNS number for? What, what are you looking for in a contract? It is the building blocks to becoming an entrepreneur and you want to make sure that you have all your ducks in a row when you start in business. It's easier to set things up right now than to go back and fix it, especially when there's other people's money involved okay but <clears throat> that's enough about me let's get to the show if for some reason you are new but i think that we have a lot of home people today hello east side dre here's how the show works i pull stories that you guys have suggested to me that i have found from different sources um and i find i pull the ones that have lessons that we can learn as entrepreneurs and we talk about them um this is a conversation this is not just me talking at you i love when you guys talk to me that makes the show so much more fun i don't like talking to myself because it makes me look crazy so feel free to drop your comments your questions as long as they are respectful all right um, and we are going to get started because we have spent a lot of time in the intro, but it was much needed. Um, for those of you who came in a little late, I do, um, uh, you know, urge that you do go back and watch the beginning of the live because there's some important information in there that I think you should have. And just my two cents on what's every, everything that's been going on. You, if you watch the show with any regularity, you know that I was not on last night. I just did not have it in me. And I addressed, you know, those things um, at the very, very top of the show. But let's get into our stories. Okay. First story. Oh, you're like, oh, thank you, Zephyrina. Zephyrina's always like bigging me up. She's telling me I look gorgeous all the time. Thank you, boo. Um, all right. So, uh, first story that we are talking about tonight, how many of you guys have a Netflix subscription or access to somebody's, it's cool girl, or access to somebody's Netflix subscription? <laughs> you got somebody's login. If you have a, a Netflix subscription, give me an N in the comments, okay? 
Um, if you have a Netflix subscription, give me an N in the comments, Mason1959. Or if you have somebody's login, give me an N in the comments. I've been using my sisters for several years. <laughs> Thank you, Smith Legal Solutions. We all know Netflix, you know, they, um, they do movies, they do shows. Thank you, AP Jackson. All right. Um, how many of you guys, uh, how many of you guys watch the documentary, uh, burlesque heart of the glitter tribe. So, uh, Netflix recently, uh, Netflix does documentaries really well. And they did one recently on burlesque, um, called heart of the glitter tribe. And, um, not only Netflix, but this documentary was also, uh, distributed to Amazon and Apple. Has anybody watched this burlesque documentary? Give me a yes or no in the comments. I personally have not watched it. Okay. Um, why am I asking if you've watched this burlesque documentary? Uh, I'm asking you because, uh, in this documentary that Netflix, you haven't watched it, Zephyrina? In this documentary that Netflix has in their queue, as well as Amazon and Apple, um, there is the use of eight seconds of a song called Fish Sticks and Tater Tots. And this is originally a children's song. Thank you, AP Jackson about, you know, having kids being excited about lunch in the cafeteria. Thank you, Open Arms Cleaning. Okay, so nobody's watched this documentary. That's cool. I haven't watched it either, okay? So there's a children's song called Fish Sticks and Tater Tots, and on its face, it's a song about, you know, kids being excited about going to the cafeteria and what's for lunch. But they use eight seconds of this song in the documentary, it's part of a routine for someone who's doing a reverse mermaid routine. So um, the, the creators of this song, Fish Sticks and Tater Tots, they sued Netflix, Amazon, and Apple for, um, for, for allowing the use of this song in the documentary. Now, mind you, there was only eight seconds of the song uh, and, and the way that the song was presented, it was a presentation of a mermaid being eaten. So that was how the song was being interpreted, right? Um, so the, the creators of the song, Tamita Brown, Glenn Chapman, and Jason Chapman, they sued Apple, Amazon, and Netflix for copyright infringement because they used the song. And the judge in this case said that um, there is no case here that this is actually fair use and Netflix, Amazon, and Apple are not at fault. The judge said, hey, they only used eight seconds of the song and it's not like they were basing their documentary around your song. It was just a clip being used to show someone's performance that was obviously a parody. But these uh, songwriters, they came back and said, but they took the heart of this song. You know, they used the most important part in the um, in the in the documentary and the judge still said no. So I want to know from you guys, because this case has already been settled. Apple, Amazon and Netflix, they can, you know, show this documentary. They don't have no problems. But do you think the judge got it right? Do you think that this eight second clip of a song that was used in a parody form, do you think that um, it was fair use or do you think that the original songwriters have a claim? Remember, this was used in a documentary on burlesque and, you know, burlesque, they take things and they kind of give it, you know, a certain flair. Um, so is this song, is the use of eight seconds of this song enough for a copyright infringement claim? What do you think? Yes or no? Because the judge said no. And I'm going to give you my opinion. I think the judge totally got it right because I'm even thinking just on social media, even on, you know, Instagram or Facebook, they give you like 30 seconds or something before they shut you down. But you're only using eight seconds of this song. To me, it's not a big deal. Um, Zephyrina said, this is what I've been wondering about TikTok. A lot of songs out there from different artists. Yes. And I actually read an article the other day that these social media sites, they're causing a lot of copyright issues. Um, <clears throat> so I think these are, these are cases that we're going, that we're going to see down the line, particularly as social media, um, platforms become more involved. Sincere39 said, I think there is enough for a copyright claim. Why do you think there is enough for a copyright claim, Sincere39? 
It's only eight seconds. And it's not like they were like, ooh, come look at these songs that these children's, you know, songwriters have done. It was part of someone else's routine and they were shooting that routine for a documentary. They, um, at least that, that, that is the way that I look at it. Why do you think there is enough for a copyright claim? Ooh, ooh, ooh. And we have another Netflix story coming up right after that. Sincere39 said they always go after rappers for using small segments of a song. You know what? You're absolutely right. However, but um, again, those are songs. And a lot of times the rappers, they're using those little bits as loops. Think about, you know, um, you, you might use a snippet, but a lot of these uh, hip hop beats, they, you know, they loop them, right? They go over and over. So you're using this small piece as the basis for the beat of your song, right? Um, Zephyrina said, wouldn't they have to give the songwriter credit in the credits? Um, I, I have not watched the documentary, so I don't know if credit was given, but nothing of that was mentioned in the article. So I'm going to assume that they did not give credit because I'm, if it's a documentary and I'm going and I'm shooting your routine that you're playing, I'm not necessarily, they, they just might not have thought of it. I, the, the person who was shooting, cause we know Netflix doesn't necessarily shoot these themselves. Netflix buys a lot of stuff from other people or they throw money at you to go shoot it yourself. Right? <clears throat> so I would have to actually look at the credits to see if the song was given, uh, you know, if they gave credits for the song in, um, in the credits. Um, yeah, but going back to Sincere 39, I think that the, the, the difference between the rapper's songs is that a lot of times when they use those snippets of songs, they use them to build the beat of their song. It is the cornerstone of that beat. And that's where, you know, the problem comes in this documentary. It was an eight second clip that was not, you know, it wasn't the focal point of the documentary, or at least that was the way that I interpreted it. Okay. All right. But um, so we're going to move on to our to our next case rather quickly, because, again, this one involves Netflix. So n none of you saw the burlesque documentary. How many of you watched the um, the documentary Messiah? If you watch the documentary Messiah, <clears throat> uh, please give me an M in the comments. And for those of you who don't know, the documentary Messiah was um, about it was documenting, you know, the conditions at detention centers, uh, particular immigration det detention centers. Okay. Zephyr, you get it. Awesome. Yeah. So if you saw the documentary Messiah, give me an M in the comments. Okay. Um, now again, Netflix does documentaries very well. Uh, but again, this is another documentary that I have not watched and I'll have to put it on my list. Uh, but during this documentary about, you know, the conditions of immigration detention centers, Netflix used the logo of um, a company called Geo Group. Um, now, Geo Group, they operate uh, a number of United States prisons and detention centers. So they are um, a corporate corrections uh, company. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's a, it's a private, it's a private prison. They run private prisons. Um, now, uh, and Netflix used their logo in some of their scenes when, um, they were showing squalid conditions and the mistreatment of the detainees in these detention centers. So geo group sued Netflix for, um, <clears throat> Uh, Geo Group sued Netflix for trademark infringement because they used Geo Group's logo in the documentary, and you know they're you and they're tarnishing Geo Group's brand. Now, keep in mind, Geo Group has other lawsuits because uh, they've been sued by actual prisoners because um, they have paid them f for low minimum wages and. Prisoners don't even get paid a lot. So how much were they paying them? Anyway, um, but yes. So Geo Group is suing Netflix for using their logo in their documentary about private detention centers and the bad conditions inside. So this case has not been decided yet, okay? Um, 
And Geo Group, they said, you know, the, these conditions, they're totally wrong. They gave pictures showing that, you know, their, their, their detention centers have playgrounds and places for kids to hang out and toys and games and stuff like that. But the fact of the matter is, <clears throat> hold on, there's a poor connection on Instagram. Okay, here we go. We're back. But the fact of the matter is um, that the documentary Messiah is pretty much negative about the immigration, uh, about the conditions of immigration detention centers. So do you think that Geo Group has a valid claim for trademark infringement because Netflix used their logo in their documentary about private detention centers, right? What is that fair use for them to, to show the, what company owns this private detention center? Or are they tarnishing the reputation of Geo Group? So is it fair use or are they slandering? What do you guys think? <clears throat> what do you guys think? Hey, Zephyrina said, hmm, she's putting her thinking cap on. Zephyrina thinks it's fair use. I totally think it's fair use too. Like um, documentaries, they are meant to provide information for Smith Legal Solutions said fair use. And Smith Legal Solutions would know because the girl is a trademark attorney. You smart girl. Um, yes. Um, but, you know, in a documentary, you are providing information to the public. Now, it may be do information that is skewed to your, you know, worldview. However, this is information that is pretty read readily available. It's you, it's you, um, but... As a company, Geo Group, your your um, High Violet Owl Creations, your logo is out there in the world already. There's nothing slanderous in saying this facility is owned by Geo Group. AP Jackson. Well, no, no, that was another thing. There's nothing. There is nothing slanderous about saying, "Hey, this company owns this." Uh, th this facility, right? Now, you may not like what they said about the facility, but that's that's not their fault. Maybe you should have cleaned up before they came. Now, we don't know how they got in there. Maybe they used a fake pass. Who knows? But Geo Group is suing them for using their logo in the documentary, um, saying that they're tarnishing their brand. And to that, I say, if you wanted to be remembered fondly, you should have behaved better. Um, <laughs> So if Geo Group wanted to have a, what I mean by that is if Geo Group wanted, um, you know, to get a good, to be shown in a good light, you need to make sure your facility is top notch all the time. You never know when somebody's coming around. This is an industrial complex. This is where people are housed. Families come to visit. Yes, you need to be on your P's and Q's. All right. Yeah, Zephyrina said, right. Okay. All right. So we've had enough of Netflix. Netflix took up most of the show. Including my intro. I think we're just going to go till nine tonight. <laughs> um, but uh, our next case, so before we move on to our next case, I want to remind you that you're watching NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Thursday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. Uh, if you are starting a business and you don't know where to start uh, and you need some, you know, kind of a legal friend in your ear to just be buzzing in your ear and say, do this, do this, do this. I want you to go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm and set yourself up a free 15 minute consultation. I also want you to go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm and pick up the free biz launch cheat sheet that is going to help you choose and start your dream business in seven days or less. Okay. Um, but back to our show. Uh, do we have any wrestling fans in the house? If anybody likes wrestling, uh, give me a W in the comments wrestling. I used to watch wrestling when I was little. I used to think it was real. Thank you, Smith Legal Solutions. I used to think wrestling was real, and then I grew up and I realized it wasn't real, and it just lost all its, all, you know, all the mystery. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I was once a fan of um, wrestling, and in wrestling, you know, there were these, there were iconic figures: Hulk Hogan. Um, Rock, macho Man Randy Savage, The Undertaker, um, who else? Uh, Rikishi. There was all these people. And there was Ric Flair, High Turf 1525. Ric Flair, who has had songs written about him by the Migos. Y'all know Ric Flair drip. Um, Zephyrina said, Once Upon a Time I Was a Fan. Yes. 
Um, so Ric Flair has been kind of in a, a, a back and forth battle with the WWE, right? Yes, Ric Flair, Violet Owl Creation said Ric Flair with an exclamation point. Those of you who are fans of Ric Flair, you may know that Ric Flair went by the nickname The Man. Ric Flair was The Man, right? He was real pretty. Um, but we know Ric Flair has not been an active wrestler for some years, though he has used the nickname The Man since 1976. He's been using this nickname The Man since 1976, right? Um, the problem is Ric Flair never trademarked it officially, and then a few years ago, um, another WWE fighter, a woman by the name of Becky Lynch, started using the phrase, the man. And Ric Flair said, hola, 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 hola. There's only one the man in the wrestling world, and that's me. So in 2019, Ric Flair started to apply for a trade, an official trademark for the man based on the fact that he had been using the name, the man, as you know, his wrestling persona for, for since 1976. Um, I guess Ric Flair said, you know what, forget this. I'm taking the money. Ric Flair has actually sold his trademark rights to the man right after he got them. He sold them to the WWE. So he got the trademark and sold it for a check. So this is, um, why it's important to secure your brand because if he had not done this, um, if he had not done this, uh, you know, the WWE would have continued to use the man, you know, and not paid him homage. But Ric Flair, I think he just wanted the recognition that, yes, I was the man. I still am the man, but WWE, I'm going to let you have the man for right now. So D Ric Flair has sold his trademark rights to the man, to WWE. Good for him for getting a check um, for it first, okay? Um, <clears throat> yes. And, um... Okay, ooh, next case we have is very interesting. This is the first case I have heard about where a state trademark beat out a federal trademark, guys. Y'all always hear me say, a federal trademark always beats a state trademark. A federal trademark always beats a straight, uh, state trademark. However, industries are changing. And for those of you who are interested in the cannabis industry, there has recently... Um, been a uh been a decision where a state um where where a, a trademark a state trademark was given precedence over a federal trademark it's totally crazy okay so in arkansas there is a company called the harvest cannabis dispensary okay um they have a state they have a state registered trademark for for the name harvest okay um now, there is another company called Natural State Wellness Dispensary. They're nationwide, but they're based in Arizona. Yes, it is strange, Zephyrina. They're nationwide, but they're based in Arizona. And they had locations in Arkansas, where Harvest Cannabis Dispensary is located, right? Now, nationwide, this nationwide cannabis company, they put their facilities in Arkansas, under the control of companies that were then named Harvest Health and Recreation and Harvest House of Canna and of Newport, okay? They had locations in Little Rock. Now, Natural State has had a trademark for Harvest, but not in, uh, not in the cannabis industry. Their trademarks for Harvest were in other states and in remote areas and not in Arkansas, um, as well as their federal trademark. So the Arkansas, uh, the people of, uh, or the judge in Arkansas said, look, you might have your little trademark over here in this little town, but over here in Arkansas, you don't have the rights to this, uh, to, to the, to the name harvest because it is protected by state trademark. Your federal trademarks have nothing to do with the, with the industry that you are in, in this state. So they let the state, the state trademark take precedence. So this is a very interesting case. If you are interested in the cannabis industry, Oh, I got your husband's attention. If you're interested in the cannabis industry, I encourage you to look up the case of Harvest Cannabis Dispensary versus Natural State Wellness Dispensary. 
Renee Plan said, I have registered a work van since finding your channel. Now I have to get the dispatching training. In. Yes! Congratulations, Renee. Renee found me a couple weeks ago and she was thinking about um, starting a dispatching business. And since she started, um, you know, watching me, she's already registered her van. I'm so proud of you, girl. Get your paperwork in order. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. But back to uh, back to this case. For those of you who are interested in the cannabis industry, Zephyrina told you congr congratulations, Renee. Go check out the case of Harvest Cannabis Dispensary versus Natural State Wellness D Dispensary because it is the first case of its kind where a state trademark has beaten out a federal trademark. I think that's really interesting, okay? Um, okay. Yes. So... Okay, and our last story of the evening. Are any of you guys into horror, horror shows, horror movies? If you're into the horror genre, give me an H. I am not into the horror genre at all. When I tell you, I have not even watched like the first Freddy movie, any of the Chuckies, none of these Michael Myers. Do not play them around me. I will leave the room. Um, I don't do horror, but I know that a lot of people like horror since they're 39 you like horror okay anybody else a horror fan um since they're 39 since zephyrina likes horror okay have any of you guys watched either the servant um which was it was, it's a show on apple tv it is produced by m night Shyamalan, or the movie the truth about emmanuel have if you have watched either the servant or the truth about emmanuel Either one, give me a one. If you have watched both of them, if you have watched both The Servant and The Truth About Emmanuel, give me a two. <clears throat> yes, about the baby, Sincere39. Nope, nope. Okay, Renee. Yes, Sincere39, about the baby. So, um, both of these, uh, uh, these... These two uh, shows, movies, these two pieces of media, they are in our stories tonight because the creators of the truth of about Manuel are the truth about Emmanuel. You don't have Apple TV, okay? You ain't got a jailbroken fire stick since here. <laughs> um, but the truth, the people who created the truth about Emmanuel are suing Apple TV and M Night Shyamalan, or they were suing them for um, stealing the concept of their uh, movie or show. Okay. Now the premises of both of the shows are pretty similar. A mom cares for a doll, a doll, um, as a real child, you know, because either she can't have her own or because her child has died and she hires a nanny and then, you know, terror ensues. Um, and the people who created the truth about Emmanuel basically said that um, M. Night Shyamalan and Apple TV stole their idea of this, you know, mom being attached to a doll. So they sued them for copyright infringement. And the judge said no. Be why? Because the judge said this is not this is not enough to prove copyright infringement. Yes, you have similar concepts, but that happens all the time in movie and TVs. How many, I'm a sci-fi fan, okay? I'm a big sci-fi fan. How many different series have there been about mutants, you know, and fighting the government? How many different series have there been or movies about, you know, aliens coming down to Earth? How many, you know, there are only so many concepts under the sun. It's just about how you execute it. So the judge, when they brought this case before the judge, the judge was like, look, Yes, they're both about, you know, women caring as dolls, but that's about where the similarities end. Since they're not said plenty, right? You can't trademark an idea. It must be a concrete thing. Now, these scripts may have, you know, the bones may be similar, but when you flesh out the the um the plots, according to the judge, they they become very different. So when you are talking about um uh, Zephyrina said a ton. Yes. So when you are talking about, you know, protecting your ideas, it has to be concrete. It can't just be an idea. 
oh, I'm going to write a movie about, about a scary doll. That's not enough. You need an entire script saying, you know, how did mom, you know, lose the baby? How are they acting? What are the things that happen after they get this doll? That is what the details matter. You do, you can't just have a vague idea out here that you are protecting. So this case lets us know that it's not just enough to have an idea. It needs to be solid and concrete and you have to prove beyond, you know, it has to be very apparent to anybody that these two things are too similar. All right. <clears throat> so, Yes. So those are the stories that I have for you tonight. I'm, my, my voice is actually going. Um, if y'all missed the intro of the show, please go back and watch it. Um, we had a very nice discussion about, you know, things that are happening. And that's why the show is running long today, because we started a little bit late. But um, those were the stories that I have for you today. Thank you to everybody who showed up. Um, again, I apologize for not being on tomorrow, like last night, but I just didn't have it in me, but I'm on for the rest of the week. Um, I hope that you guys have a wonderful evening. Make sure that you go to Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm to book your free 15 minute consultation and get all your goodies that I do. And for those of you, again, I'm going to thank you, Smith Legal Solutions. I appreciate you. Um, and for those of you who, again, if you missed it at the beginning, if you, you know, want to participate in uh, the, you know, in what's going on in terms of, you know, providing aid to people, um, if you want to provide financial aid to George Floyd's family, you can donate to the GoFundMe. It's GoFundMe.com forward slash F forward slash George Floyd. George Floyd, he left behind a little girl who is going to need a lot of help in the future. So if you want to donate to that, you know, that's something that I think would be really helpful as well. Uh, if you are in the DC area and you want to donate to the bail bond and emergency aid fund, you can donate via cash app at dollar sign freedom fighters, DC and by Venmo at at sign freedom hyphen fighters, DC. Okay. Um, so those, uh, yeah, so those are the stories and those are the points that I wanted to touch on you. Thank you, Zephyrina. So happy to have you. Thank you, Smith Legal Solutions, for putting those links in the um, in the comments again. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you guys to have a wonderful night. I want you to take care of yourselves no matter what's going on outside. You know, make sure that you make sure that you are taking care of yourself and doing self-care. Um, but also, uh take time to reflect on what's happening now. How can we as a society move forward and be better? How can we as a society show more love to each other? How can we as a society, you know, rebuild and make this a place that is equitable and fair and a place of justice for everyone, okay? Um, and I'm, I don't usually get political on here, but this is an unprecedented time and I cannot not speak about this. Okay. So I want you guys to have a wonderful evening. Oh, first time. Thank you, Turf 1525. Don't be a stranger. Come on back. So thank you all for your time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your participation. I appreciate you so much. Have a good night and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.